Hello everyone, so with Cassandra Nova becoming a little bit more attainable for the majority of players, we are seeing a really big shift in the metagame. And it's going from more like Arsham, more counter heavy, more high end, high power bursting plays into more mid range value decks. That way you have a little bit more consistency, you can win a little bit more often. And with that, we have to kind of rethink about how we're building our decks and what decks are gonna do well into those mid range builds because the most common decks that I'm seeing right now are like Angela, Kitty Pride, a lot of Werewolf, surprisingly, and then a lot of Beast Bounce so that you can explode that power on the last turn of the game. But how do we find a way to position ourselves to beat that? And that is where Tedex Day comes in. We have a lot of movable power so that it's really hard for the opponent to know where to position theirs to find a way to win. We have Jeff, we have Captain Marvel, which is probably my MVP card. I love Captain Marvel, and I so rarely have a good reason to run her. And I think she fits perfectly into today's build. We also have the Vision, which is that another mobile, movable card. We have Juggernaut, which is stealing games right now. Anytime you're seeing that kind of mid-range value, a lot of times you can steal those lanes away with Juggernaut. And if you have a big enough lane somewhere else, then you don't have to worry about what that one is and you just win the other one for something cheap like three five sometimes around 10 power or less and you can win it with just the juggernaut surprise on the last turn we have copycat which if you don't have her can be replaced with a nocturne another great mobile card for bumping up your angela uh, but copycat now that arsham has been diminished has value in spades being able to grab some of those big resources or just give you information can be so pivotal in making sure you're able to snap or retreat consistently and well. We have Hope Summers to allow us to ramp into our cards a little bit earlier, and we have Gwynpool. Gwynpool is coming back into this build. She works fantastically with those mobile cards like Captain Marvel, Vision. Sometimes you're gonna have up to like a nine power Captain Marvel, and then that Captain Marvel is nine power that is anywhere on the board wherever she needs to be. And then of course we do have the small mid-range engine that is just flooding the game right now in the Angela, Thena, Kitty Pride. Overall, while on stream, I was able to maintain just under a 70% win rate over a sample size of at least 27 games. I also played it a little off stream and it still performed fantastically there. So this is gonna be a huge deck to beat. Keep your eye out. Anytime Captain Marvel is that surprise play, it is very hard for the opponent unless they're just able to outpower you in every single lane. It's really hard for them to lock down where that power needs to go and what they need to do. And so we're going to go ahead and jump over into a couple of games. Thank you guys, as always, for being here. I hope you guys enjoy. If we do copycat in the left, right now it would go down to 10. Next turn when we draw, it'll be below Shang-Chi range, which I think is perfect and allows us to kind of hide our Captain Marvel. And so I think we have that surprise factor here that might give us those eight cubes. We lose our Juggernaut. Um, fine, as long as we don't lose the Captain Marvel. So Thena scales over there, which is perfect. We now have the below Shang-Chi range um, Hawk in the left, and we can go Captain Marvel, Kitty Pride, or Captain Marvel, Kitty Pride, which I think is this is what we do. And I think that hedges our bets so that we have room to move the Captain Marvel if need be. And so we'll go ahead and lock that in. I think by kind of hiding the fact that we had the Captain Marvel, I think it gives us that surprise factor to win Sanctum Sanctorum on that, that alone. But we don't surprise them enough. We do end up getting the four cube retreat, but we will gladly take it. We'll jump over into the next one. Next up, we have Prodigy. Uh, the first location is the Nexus. And we do have our Hope Summer, so we can scale into um, our energy a little bit easier. Rocket Raccoon, so it looks like they're running the bounce deck. Uh, but maybe we can surprise them with a Juggernaut in the Nexus on the last turn. Uh, to steal that one away. Let's go Jeff to the left. We protect it from too much clutter. Uh, the Widow's Kiss is a little unfortunate though. And so we're going to probably play into these other lanes. Unless we wanted to do a Cassandra Nova. Yeah, let's do Cassandra Nova. Next turn, we'll start looking for either Gwynpool, Captain Marvel, Hope Summers. And then we'll be able to kind of shift from there. Man, I nearly lost to a bot because he bounced really weirdly and I tried to get him into snapping. Yep, that's going to happen sometimes. <laughs> that's definitely uh, the risk that, that you take um, some of the time. So I think we go Hope Summers, Kitty Pride here. Next turn, we can go Kitty Pride plus Gwynpool. 
or maybe even Thena plus Gwynpool to see what we can end up hitting. We'll leave a bit of the left lane open, at least for now. Uh, the Widow, White Widow, uh, we should have used Kitty Pride over there. Because now we only have one space left to play, which is a bit unfortunate. But they only have one space to play over there as well. Ooh, we hit their Ajax, which is great. So good old Francis is what we're copying. Uh, we have Gwynpool, we have Kitty Pride, and then we will see what Gwynpool ends up hitting to kind of determine which direction we should go with that last turn play. That is a nine power Captain Marvel. Um, so the Viper comes in, brings the wolf over, the Hazmat comes in, uh, bumps up our Francis, which they don't know that we have the Francis. Or it should, right? I guess the ongoing doesn't calculate until it's on the board. So my only fear would be Shang-Chi at that point. But I think it's probably... I, I think it'd be a really hard stay for them to stay with just a Shang-Chi here. And so maybe it becomes copycat. Captain Marvel. Kitty Pride. That's what we're going to go with. We'll see uh, if it ends up sticking. It's only for one additional cube. If you don't play left, isn't he going to White Widow you again? Uh, oh wait, how far down are we? That, that was quite a ways though, but yeah. If we didn't play left, he most likely would White Widow. And so the singular card, if it ends up being Shang-Chi, great call, great read. Uh, otherwise, I don't know that they can compete with the Francis that we have. It is the Shang-Chi. Which is unfortunate. Oh, but Captain Marvel comes in and absolutely saves the day, right? Because she's going to bring us back up to 13. And so we had the backup line uh, against the Shang-Chi, which is so beautiful. And I didn't mean for that to happen, but it's it's... One of the reasons why I like the Captain Marvel card. We'll take it. Let's jump over into the next one. Great opening hand against Purse Lane. We have Copycat that steals Sage. Um, so it's just going to start at a higher introduction power. Uh, we have New York in the left lane. So we can always scale up our Angela and then move it over. They're running Kitty Pride as well. Very, very common for the Kitty Pride decks. Um, now that Arishim is a little bit less consistent or a lot less consistent, we see a lot more possibility for this deck to flourish. So I'm going to go ahead and go Angela mid. Next turn we have Arthena and Kitty Pride, both uh, fantastic. And I almost think we snap on them because we do have the Sage, so we know that they can't do that piece. We have our Captain Marvel, which is great. Uh, Gwynpool potentially coming down next turn to hit some of our cards. Or we save it for five so that we can drop uh, our Kitty Pride alongside it. Yeah. Summarized version, uh, purchasing the premium mystery variants is not totally randomized. It goes in a specific logic. Three feature, three super, three rares, uh, which was known, but the cadence is historical and not just for the current current featured premium variant event. Interesting. I, 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 had, I had no idea. Honestly, I've never bought the premium mystery variants, uh, but it is interesting to, to see or I guess know that. All right, let's go ahead and go Cassandra. We go Kitty Pride. Uh, next turn, we have the capability of doing Kitty Pride plus Gwyn, which will allow us to scale maybe our Captain Marvel again, maybe the Sage of a copycat. Ooh, Mr. Negative. Hope Summers, Kitty Pride, Athena, Mr. Negative. Very interesting. I want to go Juggernaut here so that they can't, so that they can't scale this power. But at the same time, I really want to be able to go Kitty Pride plus Gwynpool. That'll give us a pretty big surge here. We have to look out for like Iron Man or similar cards. Our copycat starts at nine and it's a Sage. And so it's going to end up getting really big, really fast. Um, they have the Jane Foster, which pulls out their zero cost cards which is great. I think we lose this one because that, that's definitely a combo deck and they definitely hit their, their higher part of that roll. Mm. You could always go Juggernaut Poppycat depending on how big their cards could get.
We said just saw the latest YouTube deck looks awesome. Um, it is. Uh, it, it's definitely one of the contenders. You're going to see a lot of decks running that similar like Athena, Angelic like uh, package. But it does um, some really strong, really good things. You're staying on, on negative Jane. Yeah, against my better judgment, we are. Um, it's it's only for one additional cube. Or else I'd definitely retreat. Replacements for Cassandra. Nova. Ooh, so the I, uh, ooh. Iron Man. Iron Man stackings here. They're All tough. Arnim Zola's okay. Cassandra's probably not, along with the weight. Huge win against the negative Jane Foster that ended up hitting it. Uh, the Juggernaut displaced their power, I think, in a, a good enough way that we were able to push just a lot in mid with the Sage. So we will gladly take it. Let's jump over into the next one. And so next up, we have Yo Woody, who has climbed from five to three. So kind of crazy to see that kind of jump uh, in the upper levels. We have uh, Angela that can be played into Weir Island. We have Thena. I worry about both of them scaling past the uh, the point where they could be shang chi So we'll see. The Invisible Woman is interesting. We could always try to do a cheeky juggernaut over there to push it out uh, or push whatever they play out. We have the uh, Negasonic from Camp Lehigh, which is a decent uh, site for us. Maybe we go Hope Summers. Next turn, we could do something like Captain Marvel into Weir Island to serve that, that flexible piece. The Copycat copies Korg. We can either do Athena and let her start scaling. We could do uh, like a Jeff and Athena. We do have Negasonic in our back pocket. Same with Juggernaut. I just outplayed a Doc Ock against with the biggest luck. Sometimes that's all it takes is a little bit of luck. So the Invisible Woman Ravona is very scary here. Um, Juggernaut could potentially work, but we could also do Gwynpool and see what we hit. I think we'll have initiative going into this last turn. So we'll see. They dropped on three and four, but they did a two cost card alongside it. So it's a three cost and a two cost. So they just ran into another one doing the retreat stuff. Yeah, I could see I could see it being a bit frustrating. Um, Cause then what if your opponent retreats? Does that still count as a loss? Like, does it reset your, your retreat counter? I think it could be pretty rough. Definitely not the ideal way that you want to be completing it. Same in the Tim one. Craziness. Shadow King uh, offsets all of our power here. And then it was a two and a three. Uh, at max here. Not sure what they're throwing in this lane. Which is the scary part. But I don't feel like we can retreat not knowing what their game plan or game line is. Shang-Chi here is why I'm wanting to do Juggernaut in this lane. So we'll see. So just the one card in mid. Let's see what gets destroyed. Uh, the Aj <laughs> Beautiful Negasonic value. Uh, with the Ajax. Um, could it... What do they have in the right lane? The Mystique copying the Ajax, the Hazmat, and the, uh, the Swordmaster. And so we are able to hold the left, the mid, only because of the, the Negasonic. Otherwise, there was no shot that we had there. We'll take the four cubes against the uh, sneaky Mystique Ajax stuff. We'll jump over into the next one. But it's hard to pinpoint it because it's such a flexible because it's so low to the ground that they can pivot a little bit easier. Um... And so it's it's really I think that's the question that a lot of people are going to be asking is how can I beat the Angela Athena decks? Because um, I think they're going to be very common for for quite a while until someone breaks it. The Gasly, you said you weren't lying about the bubs getting easier. Yes, um, winning two hundred million in one game. Uh, yeah, it definitely helps like really increase it once you just get a little a little roll going. And so Gamer Blob uh, is running uh, an Arsham deck, so they're one of the uh, the brave souls that are still running Arsham. We could do Hope Summers into the Vault. Hope that we get another two cost drop next turn. 
I think there may be something to, to Sandman. Yeah, um, I did get bodied by a couple of Sandman plays earlier, so I could see it. So, ooh, Legion could be interesting. We could lock the game down after on turn six. Or after turn six. Or not, on, we could lock it down after turn five. Is Arsham nerfed? It's not nerfed, but Cassandra Nova definitely hits it really, really hard. Cassandra in the left lane. We hit our vision, Arthena. I'm not sure how I feel. I'm not sure how I feel about it. Ooh, the Jeff is great here. All right, so let's go Copycat, which is the Legion in the right lane. And then we're going to go Athena into mid, which will scale. And then we have Jeff that can be used in either the left or right, uh, which I think is a really fun, a really fun line. Because uh, their werewolf is likely to jump somewhere this turn. So jumping over to the right uh, is beautiful. We have the two cube risk. The copycat stole their own legion, which is so satisfying to use their own legion against them for once. Uh, Athena in mid does have that scale. And right now, uh, it looks like they have the win. I can't see them retreating out of this. But we have the Jeff in hand that's going to win us the left lane. And so, and even if they have a Jeff of their own, ours is eight power because of Gwynpool. We should be able to outscale what they can do. Go ahead and lock it in. See if we can steal the the four cubes. We only get the two cube retreat, but we'll take it. Any win against Arsham is a fun one. Uh, we'll take it. Let's go ahead and jump over into the next one. You said done a good deed for the day. Managed to give all, all your bubs. Ghastly. Uh, what a gentleman you are. I'll be doing a little bit of that. Uh, like whenever I'm off stream and have some time. Because I have 500 million. I don't have any intentions of like grinding it out. Because um, I'll let other people grind out the bot fest. Uh, definitely not, not, definitely not for me. But we do have Ingenious Rock. Uh, the first location was Time Theater, the second one being the Collapse Mine. And we have uh, Black Smoke. I don't know if I did your Hydra Reminder, so I'm gonna do it anyways, uh, just make sure. And then Nye, uh, we have the emote only chat. And so we're gonna launch it in over there for the next two minutes. And then fatality. Uh, so we don't have any fast drops. Fast drops aren't uh, aren't, aren't an actual thing. Unfortunately, it's just a, a fun thing that some streamers do, uh, like in their bot commands. But they're not a thing that we have, unfortunately. So they have Thor. <laughs> we drool their <laughs> copycat steals their Mjolnir. Um, and so not only is it on the bottom of their deck, so we know they're not going to draw it. Um, they're going to have no idea if it's even possible to draw. Uh, unless they get Jane Foster, and then they're going to draw just a blank. And then uh, Durgu, I like the uh, I like that emote. I don't I've never I haven't seen that one before. I think it's a cute one. And so here we can do something like Athena. Do Athena Kitty Pride. We can do Captain Marvel Kitty Pride. And just forego the Thena. That opens up our last turn. But I think I like the potential for Thena to scale more. So let's do this. Next turn we can do like a Juggernaut to protect one lane. And go from there. So Miss Marvel coming in. So no... No hammer for him. No Jane Foster. I think if we do... Juggernaut to the right... Sandra Nova to the left. We give the room for Captain Marvel to move. Either that or we put it into mid. Um, but I kind of like the idea of throwing it all left. Um, we could play Kitty Pride, but Dean is going to scale just as much, so I don't know that we need to. We're just going to do Cassandra to the left. It's a six power card. We have the five power support from Captain Marvel that can come in. And Juggernaut hopefully stealing away the lake in the right. And then I do think that has been about our two minutes. So we're going to free you guys from the emote only uh, jail. I appreciate you, <laughs> all of the emotes flowing through. So they do have the snap, and I'm not sure that's a, a perfect idea for us to stay this one, but so Shadow King in the left. Um, Killmonger coming down. 
the Juggernaut. Juggernaut doesn't solo because of the Jeff move, actually. So definitely not a great idea. Wait, Captain Marvel can move to the right. We're able to steal that lane. We have the left with Athena, Cassandra, and we'll take the four. Um, just with the flexibility of the Juggernaut and the Captain Marvel, we're able to grab it. And uh, let's go ahead and jump over into the next one. Right now, we're 16 games in, 62.5% uh, win rate, uh, just under one cube per game. So, so far, it's been really good for us. Uh, glad you're making snap content again. So am I. I'm glad to be back. Um, we have Butt again, which is doing anything but losing because their rank continues to uh, to climb here. Let's see if we can maybe steal one away from them again. The few and uh, far between wins against them. We have the Cassandra Nova that we can drop on on three. We also have Hope Summers. But I kind of like the idea of Angela into the Avengers compound. And then uh, P Busy, I haven't heard the... Uh, hey, welcome. It took you long enough. The uh, notification there it was, but I haven't heard the notification yet. But thank you for the prime sub that puts us at uh, a big 28 for the day. I appreciate you guys for all the support um, and just being here to enjoy the content. So we can do Cassandra Nova. Next turn, we could do like a Hope Summers, maybe. But I think the earlier we Cassandra, the better. So Nocturne coming down. They can turn off either the left or the right lane. Um, it's either, I think we just bite the bullet. We go ahead and throw Gwynpool here for now. Next turn, even if we drop two cards, we have Jeff that can let us play into like Crown City or Necrotia. And so we won't be completely locked into only playing in the Avengers compound, uh, but we may be locked into whatever we place there, like as far as how much power we have. That is a double hit on Jeff and a single hit on Juggernaut. It's huge. Hazmat comes in. We're seeing a lot of like the Ajax Hazmat stuff, which is a bit scary. Uh, Mighty Mo with the uh, with the cheer. Thank you so much for the the 100 bits. Why no Gwyn Wright? We could do Gwyn Wright, but that would have opened us up to like a little bit more flexible plays here. We could also do Kitty Pride, Jeff. That opens up. I guess it's just Juggernaut Hope next turn, but I think we'll do this. And see, we're kind of worried about the potential Ajax, which is right there. A Shang-Chi Chi top deck would be nice. Had to get the hype train to 69%, mighty mo. <laughs> um, not all heroes wear capes. There is the Shang-Chi top deck. But... Is it otherwise enough? I don't know. I am willing to stick it out to find out. We have Shang-Chi, which will help counter the Ajax line. Uh, if they do Nocturne left, if they do Nocturne left, they could turn it off and play their card over there. Maybe be bigger than the nine power we can put. But we are willing to take that chance. All right, so the move Nocturne to the right, uh, which is good for us. Uh, Savage Land comes in, um, gives us a little bit of value there. The Sage ends up being really, really big. I don't know if we beat that after the Ajax. We do. Uh, so it goes down to 15 on their end. We're up to 20. The uh, Jeff in the left, the Kitty Pride, is enough to steal the rare win against Butt away. We will gladly take it. Um, and that... We will go ahead and jump over into the next one. 2.14 a.m. there. Yeah, I can see that. Uh, next up, we have MLE. Uh, the first location is the Vibranium Mines. Uh, we're going to run our uh, Angela on two. We have Cassandra Nova, which is uh, just good raw value. Um, unless we think they're going to play into the Vibranium Mines. I should most likely get some rest, uh, but there is Emily I watch. There's Emily. Oh, M Emily, M L E. Oh my goodness, I didn't even catch it. And so I appreciate you guys being here and hanging out with me throughout the stream. Uh, they have Jeff in the Crimson Cosmos. We could go ahead and go Cassandra. Um, that could potentially push into that middle location. And 
And they do have the rock slide. We have uh, Gwynpool to use on four. Which, let's go ahead and play Gwynpool into the Crimson Cosmos. Uh, next turn would be like a Hope Summers Athena, both into Strange Academy, uh, so that they shift elsewhere. The double hit on Hope Summers is big. The single on Captain Marvel is nice. Um, let's do Hope Summers, Athena, see where it pushes. And then next turn we have both the Captain Marvel and the Juggernaut, which I I think is a, a pretty solid line. So if they're not having any power here or any cards, Juggernaut solos that lane. And then Captain Marvel is that flexible tool to let us win either left or mid afterwards. Is there any album you tried going for? If not, how do you spend your gold? Uh, so I use most of it on like credit conversions um, and just like raw value for, for credits so that I get as much progress out of the gold as I possibly can. So super heavy in the left lane or in mid, we're capped out in mid, um, but a Juggernaut Captain Marvel will push them from here over and our Captain Marvel can move. They're going to have to fight for uh, all of the lanes to be able to have a chance here. I think the surprise Captain Marvel, whenever people aren't expecting it, can be so detrimental because um, it opens up that, it takes away that risk of playing her into the wrong lane or playing that power in the wrong lane. As long as you have good value that's being developed across the rest of the board. And so I haven't really been going for any albums. I will typically buy like a one-off variant if I'm like one away from the next reward. Um, otherwise, it's typically either gold bundles or just straight credit conversion, so I can get each new card. We got the Captain Marvel. Yeah, Captain Marvel is one of my favorite cards. I think her design is really interesting. See the doggo? Uh, I think her design is really interesting, and uh, she's never been broken, except for that really brief stint in like Silky Smooth. But outside of that, I always like finding an excuse to be able to run her. Tomorrow I'll get my Destroyer bundle. Yeah, it's a big one. And so they go into the left and into the right lane. Uh, but we have Juggernaut that's protecting the right lane to make sure that they can't steal that one away. The um, Hawk in mid actually steals of that one. Um, our Captain Marvel can move over into the left and win us there. Um, but very, very scary uh, with, the, with the Hawk being almost enough to steal the middle location or being more than enough to steal the middle location away. The Miles Morales in the left was just barely not enough because of our Gwynpool allowing our, allowing our Captain Marvel to be able to be seven. We will take the four cubes and we'll jump over into the next one. Missed it, did Dina pop off before Marvel moved? Uh, so she popped off, yeah, she, she popped off before is what it looked like. And so next up we have Nerf Arsham again. They beat us earlier and they did a, a little bit of a, a Cyclops emote. So if we beat them, maybe we beat them with like a, with like a Wolverine. Flex, but we'll see. Kitty Pride in the, in the left lane protects that one. I would like to be able to grab like maybe a Jeff over there um, to protect against like the White Widow. Ooh, a cheaper Gwynpool is huge value for us. Uh, let's go Thena and then we'll see from there. They go Thena as well. So they're running something very, very similar to what we have. Uh, so Lemuria. Um, oh my goodness. We're going to be able to do Gwynpool into Gwynpool. <laughs> um, and they're going to go off on the same turn. And so they won't even know that it, or it, it'll hit like the same set of cards. And make or break a match. I agree, Papa, uh, Papa. Your Agatha again? Rough. Do you watch the Olympics? Uh, some of them. Um, I don't watch it. I don't watch like the entire coverage, but some of the events I do. And so I, I enjoy running. Um, and so I, I like watching like the sprints, sometimes the long distance. Um, I think some of the swimming, the tumbling can be pretty good. It just kind of depends on like what's on and when I'm free. Uh, but I, I usually don't go like way out of my way to watch. So let's go ahead and go Gwynpool. Uh, that's going to do the, the duplicate, the double up. When's the over there? Uh, we don't. I don't think we have a set over there. Uh, the next patch is on Tuesday, so on the 30th. Uh, but outside of that, I'm not for sure. And so with the Jeff in the left, they go super heavy onto their Angela. Uh, we have the 10 power Vision, the 7 power Shang-Chi, the 7 power Captain Marvel, and the very happy, very happy me. Um, maybe it's Vision first. 
Next turn. It's either that or it's something like Angela, Hope, Summers. We could have seven energy, but that doesn't do us a good curve. So let's go with the vision for now, uh, the 12 power vision, and then we'll see. So they have the Kitty Pride in the left, the Nocturne coming in. Uh, so really big lane for them in Lemuria. But I'm curious if we could even uh, if we could even win it. We could do vision. Vision mid or vision right. Depending on if they move the Nocturne or the Jeff. I think maybe something like this uh, is what we attempt. So the Nocturne into the Space Throne. Uh, the single card in mid, the Jeff moves over as well. Great portal on left, so Captain Marvel to the right alone won't be able to win it. Uh, the White Widow into mid uh, should be fine, depending on how big this is. The Shang-Chi, um, the seven power in the right lane from the Captain Marvel. The scaling in mid, the scaling of their Athena is not going to be enough. We're able to grab the four cubes with the incredible flexibility of some of these cards. We'll gladly take it. And we're on an absolute tear. Uh, we had a really slow morning, um, but have absolutely turned it around with this list. We pull a Sage. Um, we pull a Sage with our copycat, which is massive for us. Uh, next up, we have Boino. The left location is the danger room. And so our mobile cards are great over there. We can get Thena down a bit early. We have the Sage, which is the copycat, so it starts a little bit higher. Ooh, and they go ahead and play their Korg in danger room to get a little bit of power over there. Um, let's go Angela into mid and see what we draw. I just had a game where I drew three Wongs. You would have loved it. <laughs> It's never long to draw that many Wongs, my friend. Mount Vesuvius could be interesting for us. Um, I think we maybe double stack in Westview. Because if we can win this one, if we can win this one heavily, I think we can win Danger Room between like Vision, Captain Marvel, and those mobile cards. Uh, nice, I heard you say Lucky Flip. Uh, did I say Lucky Flip? Oh, flip side. <laughs> Uh, so the rock slide comes in, hits us with a couple of rocks, which are a little unfortunate, but uh, maybe we can still find a way to make it work. The Mojo World is a bit unfortunate. Let's go Captain Marvel. Next turn would be like a vision in the right lane. So they have Nocturne. They can change out. They can turn off Danger Room now. We don't have the scaling on Athena quite yet. Maybe only one turn of it, honestly. Anyone want to cube donate? Uh, queuing cherry pie. Got a bot. Huge diets. Uh, what a win. What a win on your end. And so we are now locked into committing to the final piece of this game. Uh, they do have Ravona, Kitty Pride. So, ooh, we need we need a Juggernaut top deck, I think. Because they have an Iron Man, right? Uh, Gwynpool is not it. So, Vision. They could always move the Nocturne in free play over here. And we could double drop here. But I don't think that ever beats if they go the Iron Man line. Um, which with Thena, Ravona, they might. We can also go this. And then Captain Marvel can maybe move to the left. Uh, but I don't think that's a, a huge... I don't think that's even super likely. But we'll see. So the Nocturne over to the left. The double drop in mid, the single in... The right lane. Let's see. Let's see what we end up going up against. The Juggernaut in mid, perfectly fine. Uh, the Mystique copied nothing, so interesting. The Kitty Pride in the right. We have the Vision that solos the left lane. We have the big Sage 
Captain Marvel, Hope Summers, we win the right and we win the four cubes Victory. against Bowino. We will gladly take it where we can. It is nice to be on the flip side of these. Uh, all morning we were we were on the, the bad end of them. We just stayed, uh, stayed positive, stayed true to it, and eventually we got back to where we needed to be.